A girl sent a message saying she was going to break up, and the protagonist started crying. She couldn't believe it, wondering if it was a joke. She didn't take it seriously because she had plans for their future relationship and had even thought about marriage. However, she faced obstacles and suffered in her chair. A friend was about to call her to play, but eventually saw the protagonist pass by. The friend tried to help, but he stormed out, slamming the door. Her friends were angry because she couldn't maintain the relationship. Chen Yuan was a famous dog, a flatterer. He just followed girls everywhere, spending money on them and not producing anything. He was angry because after three years, he finally got it. There was no place to shift the scene with Shutong. They talked, and a group of people watched as the protagonist asked for forgiveness and gave her a pig doll, playing with her favorite animal around people. They gossiped that he had four jobs supporting her. Shutong explained that everything was fine, but after some time thinking, she realized she wanted to get back with his ex-boyfriend. The protagonist knew his ex and called her a jerk, saying to her face that his ex cheated on him and left her pregnant. Suddenly, a car appeared, and a man called him to get in. Shutong didn't like them talking and drove them away when she said that this way is better in the comfort of the store. The protagonist's world shattered as a bootlicker he thought he would never have a relationship with. But a system emerged showing his information named Chen Yuan with 230 Chinese coins of personal wealth and one point of power. However, it also showed other information saying he had 90 billion Chinese coins to be a dog's bootlicker. He was wondering what was happening when a girl approached him and asked if there was something wrong with her because he kept staring at her chest. The protagonist looked at her and began analyzing her statistics. The system showed him that her name was Shu Lele. She was 21 years old, 165 centimeters tall, weighed 49 kilograms, and almost one in eight in appearance. Her favorite menu towards the protagonist was issue 50. The system told him that if the woman reached 95 preference points, she could become his bootlicker. The main character is confused and wondering whether he should use the 90 billion given by the system on women. The system informs him that the 90 billion coins can be spent and that they have been credited to his card. It also states that they only work on women, and when he reaches the age of 95, the favorite points he earned will return one-tenth of the SP value along with some other rewards. Now the protagonist convinces Shu Lele to have a meal together and tells her that he will pay for everything. The system has informed him that everything is arranged, and he can spend it when he reaches 95 favorability points with a girl. He also received five points as a reward that can be used to enhance his abilities. The girl saw this and asked if he was trying to show off his wealth. Chen Yuan was not sure if that was true, trying to tease him, and if he could succeed, the protagonist kept staring at Shulele, and remembered that she was very strong because she made a man spend more than 30,000 with just three words. He responded to her provocation by saying that if he didn't test her, he wouldn't test her. Knowing this, he then accepted and told her to buy snacks for everyone in the class, right? Lele looked down on him, thinking he was dressed like a beggar but still wanted to flirt with her, so she had to teach a lesson. However, the protagonist spent 50,000 without worrying. A group of people talking badly about him realized he was rich, but not dressed like it. The protagonist told him casually that money meant nothing to him to not be a fool. He asked him, confused, wondering if he was a second-generation rich kid, implying he inherited everything and was a multimillionaire. He said he could add to it, but he had to go to a special place first. Let's see how I will deal with you, Kill thought in front of the Gucci store. She said he wasn't a materialistic person. She wanted assurance in his sincerity and actions. Considering his clothes, the protagonist thought he would be kicked out. But Chen Yuan said that Shu Lele is doing well, and she can buy anything she wants entering the store. The protagonist sees her ex as she accompanies him, and Jun talks about a bag she tried on. Shu Tong notices it. The protagonist is not alone. Chen asked the protagonist if it was her ex-boyfriend who said it wasn't the right time for them to do it there. He said there was no bad time. They arrived at the right time. She still had her spring collection bag. Chen Yuan asked the store that Clark responded to. They only had one unit left, 
but Chun Yuan had tried it on. The former protagonist was confused and said when he would show the difference between losers and Zheng Kai. Xu Tong told Zheng Kai that his birthday was coming. He was confused, remembering that his birthday was recently, but she explained that his previous birthday was based on the lunar calendar and asked, Can he know that people also have birthdays based on the solar calendar I told you about? Know that I don't like materialistic girls, you're not with me for money, right? Zheng Kai answered. Xu Tong couldn't say anything after this conversation. Xu Lele took Xu Tong's bag and said she would buy it since then. It seems that Chen Yuan doesn't have money to use that protagonist money. He got 20 favorite points with the friction of Xu Lele's card. He got 20 more and like. She kissed her bag, feeling excited to think about how money could improve the situation and make the bag earn her 60 points. If this continues, she will quickly reach the peak of her liking. The problem is, if she reaches 95 liking with it, without spending a lot of money just to buy cheap bags, she won't get much money back. The store clerk looked confused, saying that some men may seem rich, but actually don't like spending time with their girlfriends. The protagonist, dressed poorly, gave Lin Shutong the best. Lin Shutong was left humiliated on the floor, while the protagonist stood there saying that the bag was like a girlfriend, it's good to hold on to tightly. Her appearance. The protagonist thought she couldn't lose her and gave her some compliments. Xu Tong had tears in his eyes when she crashed, saying she had gone too far, ha ha. Xu Tong, you still have a lot to suffer, the protagonist said. But with his aggressive movement, the protagonist activated the second relationship system. It began to show him information about a girl named Chen Yuan. 21 years old, 163 centimeters tall, weighing 49 kilograms. He had a slightly higher rank than him and had 10 fewer likes with the same goal of 95 likes that you believe in. I'm doing a good job, not where we are going now, Chen Yuan, said the protagonist. The night just started, and he has a lot of money, asking if he is satisfied with just one bag. She started to grab everything she could full of bags given by the protagonist's card, which the store attendant said they would send to the address after the purchase was complete. Chen Yuan saved her favorite by attacking others, five points swiping the card, five more points swiping the card, five more points getting it. Xu Lele was tired of buying clothes and didn't even know where she would put everything, not enough space. It's okay, I'll buy you a house, said the protagonist, but this made her lose her appeal. They said they should just relax because they had spent a lot of money. The protagonist understood. It scared her, and that's just not normal for someone to buy a house for someone else so quickly, even for a multi-millionaire. Lele Shu is a junior at the 21-year-old art college, weighing 49 kilograms, and her favorite color is black. The protagonist implies that he knows her well, so he asks the storekeeper if they have a card that he can give to Lele Shu. They do, and the protagonist asks to put 500,000 credits on the card for Xu Lele to spend whenever she wants. Chen Yuan gives her the card as an apology for the misunderstanding. She blushes and feels happy. He whispers in her ear that if she can't refuse, she might as well give in. Oh, you naughty child, you evil girl. My friend Chen said, and he got another 30 favor points at the officer's store, becoming obsessed with how attentive and caring he was with her. The protagonist said that having money makes it much easier to seduce people. Shu Lele asked her if she bought a lot for him. She didn't buy clothes for herself. The protagonist said she didn't have a lot of money. But if Leo wanted to be impressed, the protagonist took him to buy some clothes. She started spending the 50000 that her father sent to pay for a haircut, some clothes, and sneakers. Lele was impressed to see the protagonist with a new haircut and sneakers and she gained another five favor points, five more. The protagonist asked if he did something wrong because he had never spent money on himself before he put his hand on Chen Yuan's chin and said there was nothing wrong with it. He just thought now they were becoming a good couple. He thanked him for saying that it was very special today. Xu Lele had 68 likes, pointing back to the dormitory. His friends asked what he did all day and why he did it all dressed up. Chen said he was on a date with Xu Lele, which his friends advised him to remind him of. Recently, he suffered because of his ex, and now he's with Lin Shutong. They advised him to stay away from her or he would become very poor. 
The protagonist thanked them for their advice. Then he received a notification from Xu Tong saying that she hated him. It's true the best is number one with each other. Chen Yuan looked at the phone while thinking about how he would increase her liking for him because he wanted her to delete his number, but he wanted to get money from her. Of course not. How could that happen? You will always have a special place in my heart. The protagonist sent a message saying that she did not do it because of the man, but because her mother was sick and needed 50,000 for a medical procedure. Xu Tong was impressed when she realized that it was just a game to him and accepted the notification that the protagonist sent. Friend Shuang asked to send the money. She replied that it was her ex who sent it. Wait, Chen Yuan, don't you dump it today, loser. It was Shuang who was rich who started to wonder if she made a mistake by leaving him, and even after that, she sent 50,000 to Chen Yuan, which only she got five favorite points. She asked Chen Yuan several questions like what he meant by sending them money, where he got all that money from, for what reason Shu Lele was with him, why he didn't buy her a bag, and if he might be a rich second-generation protagonist's child. She silenced him after he sent 15 consecutive messages and wondered if there was a more enjoyable way to spend money on women. He found a girl doing a live broadcast, but there were only a few minutes left until she closed. He got frustrated and asked if anyone wanted to send a gift or if he should end his live broadcast. The protagonist saw that he could send up to one million and thought it was much better than buying a bag. He started a frenzy of sending many gifts. The girl thanked him for sending the rocket. But then, 100 rockets appeared in the girl's hand, filtering out people in the live chat, making them angry and wondering who sent all the gifts. Someone realized that someone with a lot of money was getting low attention and sent another 900 rockets, causing her phone to crash. She was broadcasting live. An employee told the boss that something extraordinary was happening. A man spent 10 million on the live broadcast. The staff went crazy because they weren't sure if the protagonist was really money laundering through the site or if he was affiliated with the company. All the other girls doing live broadcasts saw it. The protagonist's username and were amazed that he spent 10 million on that live streaming show. They tried to send him a message in his DM. Can you see the message coming in on the girl's end? The recipient received an amazing gift, if it's all real. But then, a man with a sign came and said he had to leave. The protagonist's contact information and a salary increase would be given to the girl. She sent him a thank you message for the gift. She asked if he was still in the live chat because she was about to close it. Chen Yuan fell asleep after spending money all day. The next morning, his friends were watching online news about a man who spent 10 million for a live broadcast where girls and boys discussed what they would do if they had that much money. The protagonist realized he spent all that money and didn't create any relationship with it. So, he opened TikTok and saw a group of girls sending him messages. One girl said she was 28 years old and divorced, asking if he wanted to meet her. He was frustrated because the protagonist didn't respond to her inviting messages to her studio, saying she was waiting for him. He wasn't too excited about these messages because he didn't get any likes from his friends, who were still discussing the amount of money and getting ready to leave. The protagonist asked his friends where their destination was without him, and they answered that they were going to meet goddess Zhao Yuchi and leave early because they wanted to see her up close. His friends asked if he had forgotten because, usually, he would run ahead just to be there. Since the moment she arrived until she left, the system showed her name was Zhao Yuchi. She was the beauty of the campus, the vice president of the student council, and the dream of all students. She was a level 10 in piano, a professional athlete in ballet, and her extraordinary talent in figure skating made her incredibly difficult to approach by any man. She was a woman who couldn't be reached by everyone. In the past three years, no one had been able to get close to her. The protagonist felt challenged. Since then, she was the most difficult girl. It meant she had to spend more money. Xu Tong was nearby, talking to a friend, saying that Chen Yuan was the only one who learned how to dress after they broke up, and said she was afraid that he and Yun Kai would fight because his affection for her was increasing. Getting another ten, getting another ten, the protagonist was upset saying that the affection only increased because she dressed up. But it was all nonsense. The real focus was Zhao Yuchi.
One of them nearby talked about the desire to see how her boss would win the heart of the goddess Zhao Yuchi, and she said she would fall in love with him. She approached her to ask for her contact information when another man appeared, asking what she was doing. She didn't care who the man was talking about and kept talking to her, insisting that she add him. He said he wanted to get to know her better and become friends with her. The angry man demanded to know if she was looking for trouble and what she planned to do if Yuki took a step back, claiming it was a misunderstanding and that she just wanted to join the student union because she was the vice president and wanted advice. The angry man reprimanded her, saying it wasn't a good enough reason to make him call her a pervert. But the protagonist was unfazed, asking if she could add him on snap. His classmates from other classes watched as another man tried to talk to her. But at least the protagonist, Zhao Yuchi, decided to give her contact information to her friend Shuang and ask what was going on between them. I like to build women, why should I hide it? Sometimes the simplest approach is the most effective. Someone who doesn't like to be chased said to the protagonist, showing that he has her. He formed a flatterer relationship with her, but without affection. She was happy but confused since she gave her contact to someone with zero affection outside of her class. Her friends said she succeeded in getting Yuki's contact since she appeared like a flatterer and now looks confident. One of the protagonist's friends joked that if she was close to the president, she should introduce them to her friends. The protagonist doubted she would succeed in talking to her, saying they were exaggerating since she was the most beautiful girl on campus. A man behind her shouted, calling her a loser, but admitted she had good feelings, expressing himself as someone trying to hit on her and rejected. Chen Yuan said she was the most professional of all and that the protagonist had a lot to learn from her. The man started mocking her, saying she wasn't proud of anything since she only got her phone number and asked if Chen Yuan knew her except the protagonist just laughed in his face and then sulked, asking why Chen Yuan took so long and saying she had been waiting for her for a long time. Everyone was surprised when Shu refused all kinds of friends while waiting for the protagonist to invite UIL to dinner as an apology for making her wait, asking Chen if she looked pretty in the dress he bought her. Meanwhile, Shu Tong was very angry listening nearby to the protagonist's response that no girl looks pretty just because of the clothes. They walked away and everyone noticed them. The rejected man said he didn't understand. He was just one step behind the protagonist. But he stopped complaining when he saw Chen Yuan nearby asking who the girl was. Su Lele handed over the picture he made about her, saying he stayed up all night drawing it, and if he threw it away, she would never forgive him. The protagonist said it was the first time since he was born to receive a gift from a girl, and she asked if he liked it. He stared at her and asked if all this was just a game to keep her. Lele wondered if she liked the picture because she didn't seem too happy. He asked if she would give him a better gift in the future than just a picture. He became angry and asked for his drawing back, saying he wouldn't return it and would keep it as a family heirloom. The protagonist said she liked it more as a personal gift than anything else he could give her, impressed by how good he was at teasing five other likes. The protagonist thought she wanted him to be her pet, but she planned to use him to make more money. A man interrupted, asking if Lin Shutong wouldn't do it, who is the protagonist, and she said she was rich according to the protagonist's flatterer, Shu, who noticed that this often happens moved forward to introduce himself and asked the man's name. The man, Wang Yu, answered that he was from the art department and had been following him for six months. The protagonist told him that it didn't make sense and shared his own story of being replaced by a girl he had followed for three years, working four jobs and eating only bread every day, just to be replaced by a man with a Mercedes Benz. Wang Yu didn't understand why he did it. Sharing this story, the protagonist tried to motivate him, saying that those who turn their backs on you are motivation for personal development, and asked why a true man couldn't have a wife. He urged Wang Yu to return to his dormitory and make him regret his decision. Wang Yu was so inspired that he started crying. Lin Shutong wondered what was happening and why Wang Yu was crying. She awkwardly said that she was just the protagonist's friend, said she didn't care about his past, and showed that she didn't respect him or herself. 
She tore up her picture and told him that he could use the card she gave him, but she didn't want to see him until he sorted out their relationship. The protagonist wanted to see how she would handle this situation, like the first time this happened. Chen Yuan regretted her actions, realizing the protagonist was the first person who truly liked her, and five other favorite points. It reflects how she has matured and determined to deal with Xu Lele's problems, and now it's time to continue. She goes to talk to Zhao Yuqi, and it seems she's live-streaming, the most innocent so far, not doing anything bad to be hated. She's live introducing herself while Chi Chi practices piano live streaming for two days and asks people to take care of her. The protagonist thinks she's sweet and wonders if the president is the type of girl who is cold on the outside but warm on the inside. With arrogance, she notices that she has a slightly questioning look, wondering if that's all she gets right now. Xiaomer sends a message asking where she is, asking who she is, thinking she must have forgotten and saying she sent many gifts in her live stream. Now she doesn't remember. She says she's just kidding, and asks if she's free to meet until she says she can't if she's busy. Her schedule ignores her. She asked him not to be angry, promising something special. The protagonist's live streaming was interrupted by complaints that she still wanted him to send a gift. He didn't have a flatterer system with him, and had spent more than 10 million people tired of this situation. He decided to give the money to Chi Chi. A duel appeared in the live streaming, one-on-one -on -one between streamers, competing with each other, and whoever receives more donations wins the money they have to compete for. The protagonist is happy with the duel involved in it. The president asks who his opponent is. The crazy girl laughs at the situation, confident she will win against a beginner. The protagonist says he doesn't know who will win, and the duel begins, owned by Xiaomer with 10,000 points. While Chi Chi was poor, he gave his best using all his talents. With his genius charisma and intelligence, he created a masterpiece speech. Chen Yuan and Zhao were better off. He gave up when he got support from the very wealthy man, Chen Yuan. The conversation turned wild as they dueled. It seems like I'm using all my abilities to make money, and surely Boss Smokey will be impressed and donate to me, Xi'an thought. But then, a rocket appeared on the screen, and he thought, You've arrived. He prepared to thank the protagonist, but then he saw that all the rockets had gone to the live broadcast. Yuki, Yuchi's point, jumped to 152,000. A notification appeared, saying that the Lonely Smoke donated a thousand rockets to Chi Chi. The president was shocked, and Xiaomer was very angry because the rocket trumpet was for him. A man with a sign appeared, demanding an explanation as to why he didn't receive the rockets. Xiaomer apologized to the audience by saying she had to do something and ended the live broadcast. The protagonist commented that he couldn't handle it when he sent a gift to someone else and wanted to see their reaction, hoping the president wouldn't disappoint given the significant amount he spent. People in the company went crazy thinking the ghost had done it again, imagining that the protagonist must be like that, the son of a prince who did such an act. God, his smoke weakens the others ten million for a girl playing the piano. Does she like music? Xiao Li, get my triangle now. Chi Chi, a streamer, and her friend were talking. Her friend suggested that the president might become an internet celebrity. Impressed with the idea, Yuki replied that entertaining men online seemed like not a long-term solution. She emphasized that the most important thing for a woman is to be financially and personally independent. Chi Chi's friend asked if she knew the man, but she didn't. Chi Chi told her friend that she wanted to send a thank you message for the gift. Her friend got angry, reminding her about it. She said she didn't want to get involved with anyone. Then she exclaimed that maybe she knew the man and thought he must know her as the child of someone very wealthy. She speculated that he must be very talented and raised in a very wealthy family environment, but chose to live an ordinary life, so he found an ordinary girl and decided to like her as an ordinary man, explaining to his friend saying it's certain that his friend rejected his words. He watched too many Chi-Chi dramas, imagining how difficult his life was, pretending to be an ordinary man. His friend told him to go to sleep, saying it's already late at night. But Chi-Chi really wants to thank Chen, the protagonist. He looks at his phone and sees a message from a girl asking if he's free to eat and he says he wants to eat his favorite dish, lobster. He agrees, 
and says he'll meet her at the school gate in the afternoon. He doesn't ask where I got the money for that gift. He just invited me to dinner, which I wanted to see what he thinks. He stares at his phone. The next morning, the protagonist arrives at school with his scooter. A man stands near a Mercedes and asks if he's waiting for someone. The protagonist asks if he's waiting for someone too. The man says he's waiting for his girlfriend. The pianist arrived at that moment and advised the protagonist not to appear too eager to win someone's heart like her. You need to work hard and have a lot of money, or she will take all the beautiful girl Chi Chi looked at the protagonist and imagined him as a hero with a motorcycle that she aimed at him. The person thought, hey, you think you can get into my car, but then he went to the protagonist's scooter, and the man was stunned. He wondered, what's the point of having so much money? They left on a scooter, and he imagined himself as her fiancé. They arrived at the restaurant, ordered spicy rock shrimp for their meal, and thought it was definitely amazing. The protagonist romantically set the table for her, thinking he hadn't forgotten how to be a true man, even with the chance to go to that expensive restaurant giving off a noble impression. The family vibe and discipline were palpable. The protagonist was eating small rock shrimp and commented that it was probably the smallest rock shrimp Chi Chi had ever eaten. She was impressed that Chin Yuan was eating with her, thinking she wanted a peaceful life, a life without many worries, and said so as gently as a flower. The protagonist wondered why she suddenly got another ten favorite points, then Chi Chi offered to feed her, saying she would peel the rock shrimp for her just as she was about to do it. Someone arrived. It was Xu Tong, wondering if she saw Chi Chi feeding Chen the rock shrimp. She turned to her boyfriend and said the place was crowded and suggested they find a better place. The man asked if the restaurant was crowded or full of familiar faces, saying he didn't mind eating in a crowded place. Xu Tong walked towards the protagonist's table and threw $500 into it, saying it was for her to get up so they could sit there. What he did, she thought, was cool. The protagonist wondered. The man threw more money, telling her to leave as soon as possible and asking if she wanted more Chi Chi to carry her bag, in anger looked furious. The protagonist saw Chi Chi was angry, thinking it was because the guy was stressed, wondering where this person came from, ruining their perfect date. The man took out more money, monopolizing by saying he had a lot more to make her leave. A staff member offered to take the money and found it on the table. It was just anger chewing down. The boyfriend said he wanted to eat at that table, then someone hit him with a handbag. An unknown woman pretended it was an accident. Chen was angry and confused about what happened. The blonde guy seemed to know the woman and called her by the name Chen Yuan. He asked if she did it there. She angrily said that if she wasn't there, she wouldn't do it. He caught her cheating and cursed her. The man said he misunderstood and that he couldn't cheat because she was everything to him. Chen's admirer watched, pulling the blonde's hair and blaming her for using her body to seduce him. The girl cried, saying she invited him and lied about being single. The man said she made up the story and slapped her face. She collapsed to the ground, shattered. He moved to slap her head, but his hand stopped. A woman said, You're very happy to embarrass yourself, aren't you? said the protagonist, and the lonely smoke increased by another twenty points of favor, said Kaut. The protagonist really loves her. The protagonist continues to get twenty more likes, twenty more likes points with Cham, as the second target system bootlicker reaches over ninety-five points. The system congratulates Chen Yuan, saying she successfully turned the situation around. The bootlicker system shows that Chen Yuan spent fifty thousand. Chen Yuan allocated 10 points to strength and 10 points to fitness. He flexed his arms, and the blonde man demanded that Chen release his arms and take the bottle, threatening to kill him. Chen climbed the stairs and called the man annoying, then punched the bottle and sent the man flying. The man fell to the ground, looking defeated, and Chen said that depending on a woman is not shameful, but hitting a woman while doing so makes one despicable. The blonde man bit his lip while holding the girl's popper balloon. Chen, feeling nervous, urged him to end it quickly. Chan's girlfriend attacked the protagonist, but thanks to his new points, Chen dodged quickly, causing the blonde man to hit his elbow and fall to the ground. Everyone eating at the food court was nervous. The blonde man lay on the ground, foaming at the mouth. Chen walked away with his hands in his pockets, the young girl next to him, 
Chen Yuan, now becoming a flatterer, watching and clinging to Chen's leg while begging for forgiveness and a second chance. Cold and calculating, Chen reminded him of the man who ran more than 10 kilometers with him back at 3 o'clock in the morning to take him to the hospital, where he saved up for half a year to buy him a phone. He ignored it because it wasn't the latest model, and despite knowing all his unnecessary arrogance, always considered him a good person. He told him that all men die outside talking to the president. He apologized for everything that happened, saying that calling his president was too formal and he could call him Chu Chi. He said it didn't bother him and that he saw another side of someone. He found Shen Yuan more interesting the more he got to know him, imagining that he would bring countless surprises. When he arrived home, Shutong was soaking wet from the rain. His friend asked why he didn't use an umbrella. Shutong was also nervous to speak. Then his friend asked if the protagonist said he heard he gave 10 million to Xiao in his live broadcast. He said Chen Yuan might not look like it, but he's very rich, more than 10 million. Where did you hear this? Is it true? Chen Yuan asked. Zhou's classmates spread the news. All his friends answered they couldn't believe what was being said. His friend shouted Chen Yuan's name so everyone could hear in the room. The protagonist's friends were playing Mobile Legends League. They asked how he was so good at winning 18 consecutive matches. The protagonist couldn't imagine that adding 20 attribute points would make him so good at this online game, perfect for cool guys. His hairstyle showed it. With this talent, he could become a millionaire streamer and get the thrill. He was amazed at the power his attribute points had given him. Seeing himself, he wondered who would benefit from his body. Next door, his friends shouted for him to come out. His phone was ringing. Juan wondered what tactics he would use to manipulate him now. As the protagonist answered the phone, he was cold. Hello, Miss Shulele. Is there something you need to tell me? The protagonist's answer made her start crying, saying she didn't know what to do, showing she had entered a neglected rune full of Chen purchases. She asked to borrow 500,000. He was surprised when he thought he wouldn't send him the money, but quickly sent the account information. The protagonist sent five million, saying it was a wrong deposit. He must have pressed an extra zero, and that he could keep the money. He shouted in gratitude, and then it kept coming more and more. His fondness kept increasing. Shuleo was filled with happiness, I mean, tears. Shulele thanked the protagonist and promised to pay it back when he could. His fondness kept increasing, now reaching 94. The protagonist saw his fondness at 94 points, complained about not being able to win his heart quickly, and considered confessing, but quickly dismissed the thought. That revealed their true feelings. The next day, the protagonist was hanging out with his friends when someone called him from behind. When he turned around, it was Xu Tong holding some cakes and asking if he wanted to eat them. His friend was surprised, wondering why he brought breakfast for Chen Yuan, but then Yuan heard someone else calling him. I saw Chi Chi, who also brought breakfast, saying she must be bored eating cafeteria food they faced in A, but bootlicker showdown once again someone else called Chen Yuan her friend, angry because he has another girl protagonist wondering who this time the president brought Raymond so they could eat the three girls glaring at their president. The second prettiest girl on campus, with an aura that ruled as the protagonist, accepted Raymond and asked how he was doing. Knowing she liked Raymond and met him, she said it was easy to guess because they had a date with Chen Yuan, not even trying to flirt with him again. She just wanted to see who could flirt with him better, as the protagonist said that President Jay easily won. Since then, she understood his taste, singing a jab that could to other flatterers. Chi Chi said so. She wouldn't bring breakfast without knowing his preferences, and if someone didn't pay attention to that detail, she didn't like it after saying this. It felt like she had already done it sending a spinning punch to her opponent, too. Then he gave her a gift to show his appreciation to the impressed protagonist, his new iPhone. Friends were stuck watching the latest generation phone. One of the protagonist's friends said it looked like the girls were giving Chun Yuan a worse gift than losing her own father. The girl said she was very generous, giving 10,000 items. The protagonist told Chi Chi that he did it, too. She replied that she spent a lot more money on him and that it was important because she didn't have much money. In the next scene, Shutong, isolated, wondered how difficult it was to win back Chun Yuan. A few days later, 
There were now many competitors, called Chen Yuan, as Chen Yuan spoke privately. But Chen Yuan who did it was very angry, blaming her for everything that had happened. It happened. Xu Lele approached and suggested they form an alliance to face Yuxi. Next, the protagonist's chapter is where his iPhone praises Yuki for her gift. He looks back, thinking she said something, but Chen says it's nothing. The protagonist has 40 favor points with the warrior he thinks if it weren't for those 40 silly favor points, he would fall in love with her. Now he's impressed with her actions, feeling like she's making him a different person. He's far from completing the favor points, but he acts as if he already has them. The phone rings, and it's a small Xiaomi streamer from TikTok sending him a message saying it's the last time they can't meet. But she jokes that they can meet even though she's afraid to meet people from her live streams. The protagonist is confused, wondering if it's some kind of excuse. She says at least she should send some photos because she's not easy to win over. She receives a message from someone named Dragon King inviting her to join the legendary group of otakus who like to waste money and donate money. Chen Yuan joins the group, now called a cigarette. Someone is surprised to be invited by the Dragon King. The protagonist says she's the biggest donor they've ever seen. Protag sends a message introducing herself to the group and asks them to take care of her. Someone says she has the appearance of a rich person and must have some kind of talent that others think they have. A business? And asked if he wanted to join Chen Yuan, these rich kids want to test me? Okay, I will play with you to think, yes, of course I can help you. Let's talk message me privately. Protagonist said, hey big cigarette, I have a crazy villa for sale. Are you interested? Someone else asked the protagonist where the villa was, and the person sent the address. Protagonist said the villa is in the ENU district, and a house there is worth a million. He plans to buy an apartment, and we will check it out in the next few days inside the mansion. A bald man asked if the protagonist really considered buying it, and if Chen Yuan really had the money, because he thought he didn't. Protagonist received the address, and wondered how much profit he would make if he gave him this villa. The next day arrived at the villa with the president by his side. He asked why he brought him to the villa suddenly. Hey, you must be the missing brother, right? Said the guard. With an illustration of the protagonist recognizing his face and hugging him, the man thought Chen didn't look wealthy, but having the president with him gave him credibility. He wondered if Chen came from a wealthy family secret and thought it would be difficult to negotiate. He introduced himself as Hong Yano, and said he had a small business but needed to sell the villa due to financial issues. The bald man invited them in as the host, explaining that the house had over 500 square meters of land and over 2,000 square meters of exclusive decorations and furniture made in Italy. He urged them to enjoy the view of the river and the city, saying that if he didn't have the money, he would want to be buried there. Yuki realized he was serious about buying the place even though it was expensive, Chen took a glance, saying he thought the house would be more beautiful, and asked about the cost of living there. The bald man said he needed money, and mentioned that many people were interested in the house, making it difficult to negotiate. He said he wanted to sell it for around 50 million, but asked if 60 million was a fair price. Chen Yuan pulled the man aside, wondering if the price was too high for him, and thinking it would be hard to deceive his son, a nobleman. The protagonist said he wouldn't do it, hoping it would be very cheap. Everyone in the room was impressed by the protagonist's response, which the bald man thought should have asked for more like 70 or 80 million. The protagonist asked Chi Chi, me, them, if he bought the house. Chi Chi was surprised but said he didn't care whether he bought it or not. He approached him and said he bought the house for him. The bald man was shocked, never imagining he would buy the house. President Chi Chi stood there like a statue, saying 60 million was too much, imagining Chen Yuan locking him in the basement by tying him up. She woke up and apologized by saying she couldn't accept the gift taken by the protagonist's hand. She asked him to listen to her. She explained that there was a limit to the amount of property she could own, and she already had some houses in mind to transfer to her name. That's how she would have her own house. She imagined doing crazy things with him, the protagonist whispered, asking if she considered the relationship important, saying that everything she had was also his. Getting ten more likes, then ten more and ten more, 
She reached 90. Only five more left, the protagonist thought. He deserved an Oscar for his acting skills. His skills improved on the blonde girl. He nudged the bald one, asking when this would happen to them at the airport. The bossy man said he didn't have money for it. Meanwhile, Chen Yuan swiped his card. He said he would transfer the money, and after the documents were done, they would settle the rest. The man ordered that the protagonist didn't need to worry, and everything would be fine. In the next few days, the protagonist's plan is to go as expected. The favorite president reaches 90. Chen Wen thinks that after he completes his favorite 70 million investment, it will return more than 700,000. He looks at the protagonist and thinks about considering everything that has happened. He will say something that will embarrass him. He imagines their perfect marriage, wondering if it will happen in Milan or Mauled. He wonders what the ring will look like already thinking about the name of their baby and worrying if he will forget it when he gets old. But before imagining more, they arrive at their destination. He gets out of the car and asks if Chun Yuan is not coming out. He says no. A friend invited him to play LOL and waves his hand. He responds sadly, feeling angry, expecting more than just a goodbye. Can you arrive at the internet cafe to greet his friends? They complain that he took too long to start the game without him. Hurry up, sign up and play with them because they are missing the protagonist. Shu Lele noticed that he was there and was impressed. He explained that his father owned some internet cafes and this one had just opened. He was there to attract more customers. They thanked him, saying that the family debt was finally paid off. Chen Yuan told him to stay put because he would get him a drink and a card with unlimited credit to play. The internet cafe said it wasn't necessary but something exploded behind them. Two men appeared, staring at each other like movie characters. He asked Shulele if she was Lao Zhou's daughter and when her father would pay off the debt. Shulele looked confused, saying her father paid off a five million debt and asked what they wanted. The men said five million was just the beginning, there was still 15 million in interest. He said it was a scam and threatened to call the police. The person grabbed Shu's wrist and told him to stay quiet, saying if he didn't want to pay 15 million, they would take him away. He said that after one or two years, he would pay off the debt by working at his nightclub. The protagonist pulled his arm away, telling the person to stop if he wanted to be spared. Shu went crazy. The thug said the protagonist didn't know what he was getting into and ordered his men to kill him. Chaos ensued with some people holding cake cutters and others using their bare hands. The protagonist landed a sneaker kick to the thug's jaw, leaving his friends impressed. They said he seemed like a hurricane sweeping through the scene. The thug changed and ran away to avoid being beaten up. A representative from the casino said if they saw him on the street, there would be no more talking. With 95 throws, Chen, who he liked, became the protagonist's arm, congratulating him for getting someone else up to 95 points of favor and telling him he spent 5.3 million, so he earned 530,000. Around the college campus, it is said that she has already gained points from Xu Tong and Xu Lele, and only President Zhao is important because there is only one president that, according to the protagonist, she needs more girls to approach someone to knock on her back, asking if she can move aside because the track team needs that area and it would be better if she didn't stay there. Chen Yuan said she was brave, but the protagonist sincerely asked for her contact information. But others said she was already in a relationship and advised her to leave if she didn't want trouble. She stared, wondering if she had seen that man before. She had a flashback and remembered that the thug was hitting her and telling her to look at herself before criticizing others and asking why she was chasing Chen. Considering everything she said was easy to find an old enemy. The protagonist activated the system on that person's boyfriend, which showed her information mentioning his name, Zhe Jiming. He is 19 years old, 1.69 meters tall, weighs kg, and has an appearance rating of 8.2. His current favorite is minus 5, considering the system's difficulty will provide more attribute point increases. Celebrated by Chen Yuan, Saying she could get 22 points, the jealous man queued up for the race. People wondered who that man was in the last lane, saying they had never seen him run before. The race started, and the man ran, saying it was too easy. 
He must be an ant racer. Chen Yuan asked Lin to watch the protagonist win in the sporty car of his life. The man almost exploded with anger, asking if Chen Yuan was underestimating him. He didn't realize it, but the protagonist truly made him wonder how this was possible. The protagonist mocked the person who said he had trained for a decade only to lose to a favorite in a week. The crowd goes wild. Everyone was impressed by it. Within 15 seconds, they were already on the fifth lap. Chen Yuan, you will rise joyfully at the finish line. The most loyal girl in all of China was impressed that Li lost. The announcer said something extraordinary was happening right before their eyes. There was a new champion who would break any record. A muscular professor approached the protagonist, saying Chen Yuan had extraordinary abilities and asking if he wanted to join the promising running team, promising that with a little more training he could reach the national championship. The humiliated man asked if his place hadn't already become the protagonist's. Liao Li asked if that place was his anymore. The last romantic girl in China imagined that the protagonist was a professional runner. With that, she gained five favorite points for the loser who approached and asked if he was thinking about something else. He said no just worried about his five more favorite points and another five favorite points. Chi Chi returned to her room wondering where she was. She asked if she didn't know that the protagonist bought her a house. She was surprised by the news and asked if he really bought a house for her. He explained that he was busy visiting the house with her and that it cost 60 million in his account. Her friend wondered how a president could be so lucky, but then Nave picked up the phone and saw something happening on the forum calling Chi Chi to see it too. Rumors also said that Chun Yuan from Hu University was a human trash involved in multiple relationships at the same time, and they both looked at each other. Can you wonder if he really is trash? She said he just spent money and then it was all slander. Three cheese puff eaters celebrated, saying they would ruin the protagonist's reputation. A man appeared behind them, asking what they were doing. They were surprised and said that the protagonist was too arrogant, and they were trying to teach him a lesson. They also saw news about the protagonist, and wondered if he was no longer a man of the race. Now he had a name, the protagonist, that he remembered hitting him when they were young. With that, he gained five favorite points for the loser approaching, and asked if he was thinking about something else. He said no, just worried about his five more favorite points, and five more favorite points. He said they went to high school singing school, said the protagonist has been crazy since childhood, and there is already a lot of information about him losing. Said he used to stick to disturbing the girls. Three boys sat him down in a chair while asking more questions, wanting more details about the protagonist to be posted, and his reputation destroyed Lee who said it after winning the race. Protagonist thought he would get away with it, but he will change the way people think about his words. You and the coach won't want to help him call him trash. University News says he's the biggest trash there, and he's involved in relationships with many women, always objectifying them and warning to be careful with him. A man added that the girls involved with him didn't do it voluntarily. They say he disturbs women so much that even their grades drop. Everyone sees this saying. They never imagined this. About him, the girls are in shock. In the president's office, he takes the office person's phone and says the protagonist can't stay at the university, but he will personally investigate Chen Yuan and tell him to be expelled. In the next scene, someone said that Chen Yuan is a very kind person, especially imagining that the protagonist cannot see a girl suffering without wanting to spend all this money to help kick Joker's trash. I hate men who hit women anytime night falls, he turns into the dark night with a powerful blow. He ends all the crimes a mysterious and powerful man who protects the city's desires and sins, and the one who says this is none other than President Chi Chi. He said to him that the protagonist is the hero he wanted. The man called him a hero is not an exaggeration, and asked where he got it from. Kitty said it was his intuition that made the men wonder if they could trust his testimony. The man helped the president said he was the vice chairman of the student council, a bit strange but trustworthy. The president frowned and said he didn't want to know, and asked them to ask someone else, the person who, according to the president, is no better than he could be in that place. Now they went to talk to Chen. Hello, girl. We have some questions about your classmate. Your name is Chen Yuan. Please come with us, 
said the interviewer Chen Yuan. He's too kind, but not good enough for it. He also said he's a complete idiot and greedy, admitting that he mistreated the protagonist and wanted her to accept him back. Then he started crying. A police officer gave him a tissue to wipe his tears. The police officer asked Chen Yuan if even after the protagonist rejected him, he still continued to be a good person. The president was watching in despair, saying he deserved to have everything happen to him, saying he didn't deserve her love, and he didn't do anything wrong. The stressed president left the room angrily, lighting a cigarette to ease his jealousy, wondering if he did something wrong. He saw that his protagonist was innocent, and people just wanted to ruin her reputation. Looking down, he saw two people who came wondering who they were holding the banner, Shu Lele and her father, introduced by the president himself, asking why they were there. Shu Lele from the art department and I want to make a banner for Chen Yuan. His father explained that the protagonist protected his daughter a few days ago and helped his family a lot. The president was even more impressed and jealous of the protagonist. With that, he said goodbye. He said he might blame the wrong person and wanted to see the post again. Seeing that a girl commented saying if she was trash, she was indeed trash throwing herself into the trash can. All the girls shared and the protagonist ran various girls praising him by saying that when they saw him, their hearts beat faster. The president was impressed because only the girls who impressed him defended him. According to him, these people did this to him because he stood out in many ways. According to the president, he understands Chen Yuan, and that's what you will bring fair and will not tolerate any complaints or violations against him. The president gathered all the students to discuss rumors about Chen Yuan on the school forum. He said he conducted a thorough investigation and acknowledged it. The protagonist is honest and all the rumors about him are just pure slander. Is he there to clear Chen Yuan's name? The president announced that the protagonist is willing to help everyone, mentioning that Chen Yuan has protected many people and doesn't like taking credit for it. Praising him, the protagonist almost cried giving him an award for positively contributing to society, advising all students to learn from him. Their classmates wondered what was happening, saying he didn't do it, not understanding anything, and why he received this certificate if it was necessary to protect someone who was lying. Wondering what's going on, they continue to curse the president, as the protagonist's reputation should be destroyed, saying he should step in. They notice the place Chen Yuan belongs to his girlfriend making some compliments about the protagonist and Naik's fondness. The meeting ended and everyone left. She wondered if she was going crazy or feeling unwell and why she was so protagonist. She said she had genuine admiration for her classmate, even after helping so many people Chen Yuan didn't care about the fame or wealth it brought to win the race with Li, but didn't want to join the running team saying this action was a sign of extraordinary people. He reached for her wrist, forcefully telling her to do it quietly, and let go while saying she was in pain, the one who lost, approached. Chen Yuan in vain, Li, who started boasting, had Tesla in more ways than he did, but right next to them the protagonist called the bald man to pick her, saying she didn't want to be like that picked up by a fancy car and wanted to maintain a humble profile. This is just the head of the illustration entering one of the new cars. The bald man apologized saying he was sure he was on time. He came with a car that the protagonist got angry and told him to pay more attention when he said not to get into the expensive car. The man said he understood the message they both saw, and with that, the protagonist left Lee's. My friend said he was bored with the situation and wanted to break up. He said it was impossible, but he ended up isolated in Chen Yuan Land Yu to transfer some money to the bald guy. He thanked him. The protagonist said that while everything was being resolved, he would return to school. The bald guy offered a ride, but Chen Yuan said it was not necessary because the car attracted too much attention. He said okay, and just asked the protagonist to be careful walking through the city. The protagonist said that his priority was the need of President Zhao to finish the system and get 25 attribute points he said he had to buy something for him, and wondered if the fat man had anything else to sell. Looking at the group chat, everyone commented, even with a little conversation, the protagonist bought the house for a man said Chen Yuan had a lot of money available, that the protagonist ordered them to relax and said he bought it just to help a friend. 
The friends were shocked when the protagonist appeared. Everyone in the group praised him. A man in the car photo asked if he didn't want to buy luxury items. The car said he knew some people who sold him. A man then called her, saying that Mr. Zhang Haoqian's family had a small business importing cars, and it was nice to meet the protagonist. The protagonist looked at the card and saw it was written, John Chun Yuan Group. He imagined that his family had a giant industry, and he must be a rich second-generation kid, he said. Zhang Haoqian, who managed such a large car business at his age, was very impressive. The guy said he thought the protagonist was older since he bought the house. They chatted, and from a distance, two girls wondered if Chun Yuan thought he was definitely the son of a rich family, considering that Zhang Haoqian's manager accepted him, but they fired him because they thought they didn't have a chance with him, which the manager did not want. To boast, but said he had the largest collection of luxury cars in the city. He said the protagonist could ask for any car he wanted. The protagonist thought of that legendary car and said he wanted a Bugatti Chiron. The man thought Chen Yuan was definitely joking since there were very few units. The protagonist said he didn't have it, and Zhang Haoqian felt embarrassed. He asked if they had a Lamborghini Veneno. Zhang Haoqian responded that they should not ask whether they have a Pavan Huera. JN replied that they do not have a person by that name. He was sweating profusely, saying that Chun called the manager to explain the range of vehicles they have for sale, from two to eight million, and the protagonist's desired car was slightly outside that range. The protagonist was disappointed, saying he expected more from Zhang Haotian, who claimed to have a luxury car, according to his protagonist's Zong. Surely Chun Yuan must have bought a house with that price, but it seems like he wanted a car of the same value. The manager said they do not have the car he wants, but they have a Ferrari La Ferrari that you must see. He mentioned that it is one of the rarest Ferrari cars with a V12 engine, dual clutch transmission, 800 horsepower, and it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per h in less than 3 seconds, only costing 22 million. Asked for the protagonist's opinion about the car, Chen Yuan said that it is considered very expensive, but not cheap either and that it might be the perfect gift. President Zhao Sang agreed that if the price is above 20 million, the deal is done. Chen Yuan praised Zhang Haotian's effort and said he wanted to swipe the card right away. He asked if his car could be delivered to Riverside Villa. The number one community man is the one sweating nervously, saying he can arrange it. Keenan received a call from Liu Wenjie while shouting in his ear. The next day, the protagonist's friend told her that it was her boyfriend Liao Jia's birthday. He said he was getting his nails done with a friend, but she became suspicious since he had been out for a long time. Then it started raining, and she knew he hadn't taken his umbrella, so she went to the choir practice to give him one. But what she saw at that moment would break anyone's heart he was cheating in the middle of the rain, the protagonist said, her heart not stopping hurting since their three-year relationship and she had already planned to meet his parents. Keenan said it was okay, and he had already drunk eight bottles, so it's better to take a rest, but the heartbroken man wanted to know how to win her back. The protagonist said he had to stay focused, and that the mistake was not his, and loudly told him that he was a bootlicker. The sad man collapsed to the floor, asking the protagonist if it wasn't hard to accept, and she couldn't accept that he had betrayed her. As the protagonist now angry, she said he needed to learn a lesson and took her phone to ask her friend who he was calling. Keenan's plan was to tell her to relax and trust him that from now on he would handle everything and he would make sure that his ex-girlfriend would kneel in front of him and beg for forgiveness. The protagonist called the dealer who quickly answered Chen Yuan said he wanted to borrow some cars, but not too expensive. It was worth more than 20 million and he said he needed some reliable friends to drive them tomorrow. The dealer said it was not a problem, and he would arrange everything for tomorrow. The protagonist's friend, who was still confused, called Chen Yuan. His friend Liu Wenji observed it with just one call he brought the beautiful girl, and asked where Chen Yuan was, who used to lick the woman's boots, disappeared. And why now, it seems like he's licking his boots. Hey Su Lele, this is my brother, said Wenji. The protagonist introduced his friend. He was confused thinking his protagonist called him just to introduce a friend. 
but he thought further and came up with an idea that maybe he wanted him to meet his close friend. But the protagonist quickly replied that it had nothing to do with it, and he just needed help with a little joke that could happen. The next day, the protagonist's friend showed up looking for gangster Shu Lele, clinging to his arm, saying he scared him by almost hitting someone with the car he bought for him. The friend of the protagonist was all nervous and said that if he hit him, there would be no problem, as they could just buy another one a few more times. The ex-girlfriend of Chen Yuan's friend wondered how he turned into that man, looking like a rich second generation. She asked if Venza came there just to show off. He said there was someone there barking nervously. The ex angrily asked what he was doing, asking if he didn't know his family. He admitted his mistake, but said he was doing it shamelessly. In the car, another friend said that the woman knew everything about her siblings. She was about to step on stage and the show would start soon. The word is, a few people came out of the ugly Ferreras with white hair and asked Wenja if everything was okay, and if he knew him, approached to talk to Wenja's new girlfriend who cheated on his former little girl. He said his name was Ma Kai. His family belongs to me. This person always lies by pretending to have something to impress the depressed girls, and you think he's a rich kid generation wake up with the reality of Ma Gu, said the white-skinned man. The man was caught cheating with Wenz's ex. He asked the white-haired man to let him go. The white-haired man said to these people, the tactic never changes. And that's the only thing that works to deceive innocent girls, adding that Wenz's ex has now lost his girl and is angry for being deceived. After that, the guy cheated on Wenzhe with Wenzhe watching and telling everyone to leave, but his ex clung to his leg and begged him not to leave her, saying it wasn't about her liking luxury, but about fairness, fearing poverty, and asking for another chance. Coincidentally, Wenzhe told him not to call her name and this would be the last time they would see each other, telling him to never contact her again. The man needed to look around, seeing everyone talking. He tried to leave but bumped into the chest of the protagonist, Chen Yuan, asking if he wanted to escape, but only if he took 100 slaps at the bar. Everyone driving the Efraz celebrated finally meeting Mr. Yuan, the famous one. The main character sang, saying he didn't mean to do that, and thanked everyone for their help. The people said it's okay because he's Chef Zhang Haotian's friend and he doesn't need to be formal with them. The man with white hair asked if he's not the guy from the streaming platform news and said he has a request. The main character asked what this help is for. The people looked at each other. The guy with white hair said he has a favorite streamer but ran out of money and asked if Chen Yuan could give a little help. The main character thought the people were trying to see how much money he has. The protagonist asked the dealer to tell him not to worry, saying it was just a joke. He looked towards the white-haired man and said that if he wanted to hit a girl, he had to handle it himself. Losing his cigarette, he slammed his glass on the table. People thought he didn't do it, like a joke the protagonist made. The joke was too light for him because it was just about sending a gift. He said he would do it, went to the bathroom, leaving his phone on the table to be spent by the man as much as he wanted. The man took the phone angry because he was allowed to use it freely, trusting a stranger to spend his money. Chen, you didn't thank him for knowing there was no money in the account to pay for all the drinks. But he knew the man could send gifts as he pleased. The protagonist went to the bathroom to relieve himself. The man looked around, imagining dragging chicks, and murmured that the good kid came out of Chen Yuan's bathroom and saw everyone gathered. One person wondered what happened. Oh, God. The cursed man, everyone around the table, said the protagonist had arrived at the table, asking why they were acting like that. That's what the white-haired man got nervous and returned the phone. The protagonist called him weak because he only spent 20 million when he entered the bathroom. People went crazy wondering if he had more money than the bank. The protagonist was angry because he only spent 13 million and said it wasn't even 20 million as much as he said he would spend 60 million. The man grabbed his hand and said his spending was enough. He wouldn't do it comfortably with all that money. The dealer came and told the white-haired man that he couldn't win and proposed a toast to Head Juan. The man started toasting. Respected chairman, from now on, I will follow your leadership. The audience wonders who the man in the middle of their circle is. They say the man with white hair is quite wealthy. 
but he seems to be involved with Chen's protagonist on the phone. His appearance says goodbye to the group, and Blue realizes the protagonist's plan and says he fled because he didn't want to pay his debts. But another man calls him crazy and asks if he didn't see the money spent in front of them, and the man just agrees. The message comes from a small streamer saying he's in town and can't wait to meet him. The protagonist says he's free tomorrow and sends some kisses to Chen Yuan. Yuan looks and says that after a while he will reap the rewards of his kindness. He thought it would only happen by dating, and it with his charm he wouldn't have any further problems. But the next chapter begins with that big message from Chen Yuan, saying they could start over, and he imagined them traveling the world tasting all the dishes. But when he woke up he saw he was alone and asked for her forgiveness. Prot went there blocking and deleting her contact because his date with the little streamer girl asked what he was doing, but Chen Wen said it was not important than asking what he was talking about. He remembered his boss scolding his words. He spent more than all his fans in a day. And even if he had to undress and wear it to sleep, he had to catch her, the little streamer thought so. Even with her pretty face, she looked indifferent to him and disappointed because she couldn't win. He tried to charm her with his charisma, asking how he could get rich at such a young age, but the system sent a message saying his preferences were too high and he couldn't connect. The protagonist realized he needed to lower his preferences first and wondered what to do. He started doing disgusting things to lower his preferences to create a connection, like putting his feet on the table. She told him he was just an unemployed lucky guy who was angry because he didn't work but had money to spend. The protagonist said he was only using his father's money and they would go bankrupt because of millions of debts to the bank. He said he arranged this meeting to see if he could get back the money he gave her because he spent too much. He felt disgusted when she didn't wash her hands after picking her nose, but at least the protagonist's plan worked. When he lost by 20 points, his crush couldn't accept it anymore and asked why he invited her on a date. He replied that asking for the gift back showed he wasn't an honorable person. Losing by twenty, losing by twenty, losing by twenty, he said. You must be crazy to agree to go out with a loser like him. The small streamer called someone and said she met the protagonist and he kept bothering her. She thought he might be a stalker. The protagonist was disappointed to find out something like that. The dishonest woman called him shameless for changing his attitude so quickly. A man burst through the door asking who was bothering his woman. She ran towards him, saying she was scared to death. Chen Yuan, the man, ignored her and approached Yuan's brother, who was said to be the shy protagonist. That man left an impression on me. Yuan said it was an honor to know him. He wasn't confused about why Mr. Yuan acted so politely towards him. The man was one of the second-generation hair owners of the richest industries in the area. He slammed the table, calling him stupid, saying he was disturbing one of the most important men. He called him poor. He wondered why he was doing this, thinking that the protagonist was testing his sincerity and realizing he was messing up the small streamer. He knew he needed to win her back and started apologizing, begging for her forgiveness. With that, the system connected with him, which the protagonist took. He looked and said it was okay. She did it just a young, inexperienced girl. He said he understood and that she was really his favorite. Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 favorite points. Can you wonder if this is the way people make a living seducing others, thinking that as long as they can get the money they like, they will rise? He said he wouldn't let her go that easily. The man from the date slammed the table, saying he spent a lot of money on her to boost her popularity, and he treated her like one of his friends. The man invited the protagonist to an honorary event. The protagonist said she could go without any problem, and she did it to honor their friendship. Shen Yuan got into the car, and the streamer said she wanted to join too. He hugged her and asked if she was angry. She said she truly understood. She was wrong. The protagonist took out her phone and opened the streaming platform. She said it was okay, and she was also worried a lot. Chen Yuan started a live stream with a well-behaved girl telling viewers to follow her small streamer to watch something.